You are welcome to Little Talk of 247. This is a little channel where the heart and science of literature are discussed. My name is Folahan Oilekon. I am a literature teacher, examiner, author, content creator, and a publisher. This video is about an important topic in literature and indeed it is an understatement to say that this topic is a pillar of literature in English. The topic is figures of speech. As we all agree with me that figures of speech can be referred to as an engine room of literature in English or literature generally. Let's go ahead and discuss the topic. Figures of speech are expressions that have literally or hidden meanings that are different from the literal or facial meanings of expressions. What we are saying here is that figures of speech have different meaning that is uh, not the same as the way we are looking at the expressions. That is, they contain hidden meanings. That is different from the facial meaning of the expression that we might be looking at. They have beauty to language and make it easily understood. Figures of speech are used extensively in literature, especially in poetry, to add beauty to the language used in such genre of literature. Figures of speech are many. Before we go into the details, it is necessary to identify the importance of literature. Let's now identify how important this topic is. You know, I said earlier that we can say that it is the engine room of literature. Let's look at the importance. They enhance the beauty and the impact of words and expressions used in literature. They are imaginative and creative tools used by writers or authors to convey complex ideas, evoke emotions in order to engage the reader's senses. So, authors or writers use figures of speech to engage readers so that they have interest in reading the work of art. They have depth, color, and intensity to the description of characters, settings, and events in the narrative. Hence, literary work will be more memorable, engaging, and um, fairly similitude. What do we mean by fairly similitude? That the literary work will be lifelike. That is, it will appear as if it is real. That is literature. And that is the, as a result of the usage of the uh, figures of speech. Figures of comparison, like metaphor, simile, personification, and hyperbole help in creating powerful comparisons, associations, and contrast. This opens the reader's minds into seeing familiar things in a new light and facilitating a deeper understanding of the literature text. So, these uh, figures of comparison are used so that reader will can see things in another way, in another face. Complex ideas, emotions, and concepts can easily be conveyed to the readers through the use of figures of speech. These ideas can be presented in a mild, accessible, and relatable manner or indirect way. With this, readers will be able to digest the message being put across. A good example is a movie museum. A museum is one of the figures of speech that we are going to discuss. This is when something absurd is presented in a mild way. Those are the functions and the importance of figures of speech. Some of the beauties added to language by figures of speech are artistic and aesthetic in nature. They project the writer's language skill and creativity, you know. 
how much a writer or author can use a figures of speech to tell us how skillful, how experienced the author is. The transformed literary works like prose or poetry into form of heart. They have to create rhyme, rhythm, and unique voices to enhance the aesthetic appeal of the written work. You can see that poetry, as an example of a genre of literature, poetry shares some features with music as a result of the usage of rhyme and rhythm that makes it to look like a music because you cannot read through poem the way you read through prose. So these are the uh, these are some of the importance of figures of speech in literature. Let's now go and discuss the figures of speech. The first one here is simile. This is a comparison of two things that is the likeness of one thing or object to another. They are introduced by like and as. E.g. Mercy is like a lion on the field. Muhammad Ali fights like a beast in the ring. He is as wise as a tortoise. Sardinian sings like a bird. So, we see here, that means we are, we, are start, we are trying to compare Mercy and Lion, Muhammad Ali, and the way beasts fight, and the wisdom of tortoise with somebody's wisdom. And that also Sardinian is being compared with a, a bird here. But we make use of like and as here. Now let's go to metaphor. It is a comparison of two things without the use of as and like. It shows that two objects share the same quality. No one is liking to the other. Here, we are not making use of as and like. So, let's look at the examples. Mercy is a lion on the feet. Instead of saying mercy is like a lion on the feet, as we have it in a simile, Muhammad Ali is a beast on the ring. Instead of saying Muhammad Ali fight like a beast on the ring, he is a tortoise. Instead of saying he is as wise as a tortoise, Selin Dion is a bird. Instead of saying Selin Dion sings like a bird. The next one is conceit. This is the use of simile or metaphor elaborately in an expression by making comparison between totally dissimilar things as we have in John John's poem, A Valediction for Billy Money, quote unquote, where the souls of two lovers are compared to the legs of drawing compasses. So that is a conceit. So at the time we call it a elaborate a uh, simile or elaborate a uh, uh, metaphor. We also have personification. It is an expression that gives the qualities of an animate object or thing to the inanimate or non-living object. We have examples here. The car ran angrily into the house. Angrily. It's woman being that that is that can be angry. So we have given that attribute to car. The fire spread its tentacles to the other houses. Tentacles. We have tentacles on uh, snails. Snails that has tentacles. Eh? It's uh, only snails that can have tentacles. So we have given the attribute of snail to fire there. And this means that the fire spreads to the other houses. Nature is kind to him. This moment that can be kind. Death lays his icy hands on the king. And laying icy hand, laying hand is attributes of a human being. Or living things, living things that has uh, hands or human being. We also have pathetic fallacy. This is an advanced personification whereby an inanimate object, animal or nature directly put on the attributes, feelings, responses, or characteristics of human beings. For example, the angry wind cutted away the roofing of the buildings. 
also the more is in law of the mind. That is, we call it advanced personification. Also, alliteration. This is the repetition of the same consonant sounds at the beginning of two or more closely placed words. For example, proper preparation prevents poor performance. We have the repetition of O here. A black, beautiful, brilliant bride for marriage. There's repetition of O, B, B, sand. The case of the king is in court. K is repeated here. Now, in order to find this, we have to apply our knowledge of plural English here. Because if you are trying to consider the alphabet, you might get it wrong. You have to consider the sound. Let's look at the last example here. We have, we will say, the case. The case of the king is in court. You know, this one is C, but the sound is K. Eh? This is king, K. See, here we have C, but the sound is K. So that's what we are going to apply. We need to apply our knowledge of oral English. The next one is assonance. Assonance is just like the opposite of uh, alliteration. It is a representation of four sounds in a line of poetry. We have examples here. The high looks like I. So I sound is repeated there. Alone, alone. All, all, alone. We have repeated the region of A. Ah. Far on the ringing plain of Wendy Troy. We have represent of E. The next one is consonants. This is the combination of musical notes or combination of sounds in poems that sound placing together. Example, slip slop, creek crook, black block, drip group, bam bam. That is consonants. That is, they are in consonants. Even if you look at the many of the consonants, we, we, we understand it like that. Irony. This is the use of opposite statements in conveying one's real meaning when one is saying the opposite of what he or she means to say. We have examples here. The boy is the tallest in the school. I'm referring to a dwarf. That is the tallest in the school. He has the best result in the school. For somebody with F9 in all the subjects, and somebody that fails all the subject, and say he has the best result. There are three types of irony. We have dramatic irony, verbal irony, and situational irony. Now the dramatic irony. This is a situation whereby the audience or the readers have information or know more about the play. That's the mistake here. Sorry. Ah. Let me take it again. This is a situation whereby the audience or the readers have information or know more about the play than the characters in the play. That is when the audience watching the play knows more, that have information about the play more than the characters. That is dramatic irony. The characters remain in the dark about the situation in the play, while the audience or the readers know the realities of the place. I mean, the realities of the friends. Now, verbal irony. Verbal irony. This is when the opposite of what is said is meant by the speaker. This is used most of the time to demean somebody. You want to demean somebody. When you want to talk somebody down, you use verbal irony. Also, situational irony. This is a type of irony in which the situation is different from what one naturally expects to happen. A good example is a teacher whose children are not educated, or a judge that his child is found among the armed robbers. You see that? That's situational irony. We also have onomatopoeia. This is a combination of sounds in a word that resembles or suggests what the word refers to. We have examples here. The gun booms, the lion roars, the cat meows, black crack than the wall. 
see that those sun the coming of sun in those world resemble as of yes they are many the gong booms you know it's something like the sound of the gong the lion roars like as if like the sound of a lion they can't meows you know it's something like the sound of uh, cow uh, uh, cat black crack that the world you know that black crack is sounding like the world is falling I think you understand it here Pong. This is the play on words in the literary work. A word is used twice or more in an expression to mean different meanings. We have examples here. Do not let it eat your death. Here we have it and hate. That it has been used twice there, but they have different meanings. The first it, do not let it, is a disease that we all know. Hate means no, allow it to lead to your death. Better be late than be delayed. To be late is when somebody does not uh, reach maybe to maybe a place of work or somewhere is going on time. Why the other late is to be dead. God gives rest and we told the rest. God gives rest. Rest is for somebody maybe to rest for some time. And we do the rest, the remaining. The second rest means the remaining. We also have paradox. This is the use of a statement that may look far from common sense or truth, but as a hidden truth. Example, the child is the father of the man. Money is the root of all evil. More is less speed. The best preparation for peace is to prepare for war. Failure are the pillars of success. You know, if you look at this expression, we'll be thinking that are they meaningful? Is somebody saying it is saying something sense is he saying something sensible? But they are they are truth. They have hidden truth. Sinedoke. This is a figure of speech in which a part of something is used for a whole. For example, six hands at an open door, dancing for pieces of silver. Six and here is referring to men, it's referring to six men. The man is already on the wheel. The wheel is referring to a vehicle. The wheel there is referring to a vehicle. So a part is, is being used here to represent a whole. All hands must be on deck. And there refer to people. Two good heads are better than one. Heads there refer to people. So, a part is used for to represent all. That is Sinedoke. Chasmos. It is the infusion or reversal in word order, in phrase or clause. E.g. Dries were the season, all things were dry. You know, there is infusion of uh, expression there or words there. That is Chasmos. Euphemism. This is a figure of speech in which an unpleasant thing is said in the pleasant way or milder way. So here, something that is absorbed is not presented in a more pleasant way. For example, Sinarambo is a gentleman on the road. So this Sinarambo is an arm robber. So instead of saying, it's a, it's a, uh, instead of saying Sinarambo is an arm robber, say Sinarambo a gentleman on the road. Uche has a light finger. That means Uche is a thief. The man kicked the bucket. That is, the man died. The next one is hyperbole or exaggeration. This is the use of an undue exaggeration in an expression. For example, the whole world attended this wedding ceremony. Is it possible? No, that's funny. Is it possible for the whole world to attend somebody's ceremony? That is hyperbole. She was torn by a million bees. Can you count this? When somebody's been seen, this thing by the idea. How do hurt a mountain of fufu? Selindion sang and all the world was happy. Those are examples of hyperbole or exaggeration. We also have litotis or meiosis. It is the opposite of hyperbole. It is a figure of speech with the deliberate use of understatement for the sake of effect. Example, 
I am a man of no main city, means I am from a big city. It is not uncommon for students to enter the class promptly after the break. What they are saying is that the students don't enter the class uh, promptly after break. So that is a uh, on that statement. Oxymoron. This is the use of two contradictory words side by side in an expression. We have examples here. Women are necessary evils. I know women will not be happy here, but we are only citing examples. We say something is necessary and same time evils. So that is contradictory. That is oxymoron. It is a bitter truth. Bitter and truth. Contradictory words. This is the beginning of his living death. Living and death. They are contradictory. It is an open secret. Those are contradictory words. And they are put side by side. That is oxymoron. That is the beauty of the gospel for you. And it brings uh, this, uh, this beauty to literature. Antithesis. This is the use of two contradictory statements side by side in an expression. You know, the first one we discuss here is oxymoron. That has to do with the, the use of contradictory words. But antithesis has to do with contradictory expressions okay, side by side. Okay, let's look at the examples. Cell is a queer place. Sometimes I have one. We all know cell. So cell is a queer place. Sometimes I have one. This cell is a great place. That's a, a place that's not convenient for human habitation. Yeah? So it's a great place. See, sometimes I have, you know, those expressions are contradictory. What do you mean by sometimes that they say can be, can be a have. A have, a have is a, so, somewhere that is pleasurable for people's uh, for human habitation. You know, this, this, this is quoted from a poem that is written about the Nigeria Civil War. So, the cell is a great place. Sometimes I have during war, cell is a have because though in the cell they should take care of them, they should protect them. But those of us outside, those of you outside, we are not safe. Bomb can just stand anywhere at any time. Bomb can be thrown to anywhere at any time. But those in the prison or in the cell during that period, they are in safe hand. We must take care of them. So that's why they say cell is a great place. Sometimes I have to her is Puma. To forgive the divine. So those are contradictory expressions put side by side. We also have metonymy. This is the use of something related to a thing and representing it in an expression. Something that's related, commonly related to that thing is used to represent it. Examples. The crown attended his birthday. You all know that the king that used uh, uh, our kings that make use of crown. So we are saying the crown represent uh, that the, the crown attended his birthday. That's what we are saying here. The pen is made mightier than the sword. Pen represents the journalist, while the sword represents the military. You know, in the olden days, the military men use a sword. That's why they are, uh, the sword is used to represent the military death. The great heirs said to the disagreement. Great heirs refer to the elderly here. So that's metonymy. We also have climax. This is a figure of speech in which events or occurrences are arranged in ascending order as it happens. The most important event is put last. E.g., he came, he saw, and he conquered. Another example he lost his wristwatch, his children, and wife all in a day. So that is arranged. They are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are arranged uh, in ascending order as it happened. The opposite is anticlimax or battles. It is a figure of speech in which events are arranged in descending order or in order of less importance or impressiveness. It is the opposite of climax. Now, example here love your country, tell the truth, and don't dawdle. Another one is he lost his wife, his children, and his wristwatch all in a day. That is anticlimax or battles. The next one is sarcasm. This is a simple form of verbal irony. It's a remark, ironically worded in bracket, would decoy a person. 
It is also a statement used to hold the feelings of another man. It is a painful remark of contempt or pretending to praise. It is also an indirect way of making jest of somebody. That is sarcasm. When you are indirectly attacking somebody, but you present it in a way as if you are praising him. That is sarcasm. You know, journalists make use of this one a lot. The person will think that they are healing him, they are praising him, but they are feeling. Example. We have this one from a uh, this one is a bit uh, biblical. El the king of the Jews, quote and unquote. This is an inscription written on Jesus' cross when being crucified. You know? This uh, inscription is written by the enemies. They don't say El the king of the Jews. That is sarcastic. It's sarcastic. Although Audu is a blind, he could drive from Lagos to Medigori. It's sarcastic. The next one is apostrophe. It's a figure of speech in which things or ideas, absent or dead persons, a spirit, abstract ideas or certain powers are being addressed as if present or living. That is when you are addressing something that is not living as if it's living, or something that is absent as if it's present. That is apostrophe. We have examples here. But let's say rain for now. Say, oh, rain! When will you stop falling? You are addressing rain as if you are addressing human being. Out all grief candle, this one is a uh, magbit, my uh, magbit. Oh, dead, where is thy sting? Oh, great, where is thy victory? That is apostrophe. The total question is the next. It is a statement that is put in form of a question but requires no answer. It's just an, a statement, but it is put in, in form of a question and requires no answer. For example, if I were you, wouldn't I buy my literature text? Let's say teacher is addressing some student like that. If I were you, wouldn't I buy my literature text? You see that? That doesn't require any answer. Another one. What is the essence of your coming to the school if you can't stay in the class? Eh? You see? That is rhetorical. Repetition. This is saying the same thing more than once. It can be a word, phrase, clause sentence or rewarding of the same idea. Repetition is used in literature for emphasis. For example, river bear, river bear, twinkle, twinkle, little star. These are examples of repetition. They are just to lay emphasis or to call attention of readers. We have parallelism. This is placing phrases or sentences of similar construction and balance side by side or one after the other to maintain balance or reinforce each other. Example, give me liberty, cheese of poverty. Next one is sylepsis or zegma. This is the use of one word in two different senses, literally and figuratively. That is, one will give us literal meaning, one will give us figurative meaning. That is, one has facial meaning, while the other will be used figuratively with hidden meaning. Example, the beautiful girl stole away my heart and then my money, you know. Stolen with my heart, this one is figurative. Why stolen with my money is literal meaning. Stolen with somebody's heart, that is have to do with love. Not that they remove the person's heart. He is so hungry that he wanted to eat up the cook and her food. That is both figurative and uh, literal. We also have Inuedo. It is a book of speech that emphasizes only the bad aspect of something or somebody indirectly. Let's look at the examples. He has a very high sense of discipline and self-control with matters not concerned with fornication. Let's look at that expression very well. What they are saying is that the man, has, the man can control himself eh, with any other matters, but fornication, that means that the person is a fornicator. Another one is very intelligent when it comes to matters related to corruption. You see that? That means that the person is too corrupt. The last but not the least is allusion. Allusion is an implicit reference to a historical event, time, person, or place in a narrative or any literary work. That is an implicit reference to a historical event. 
time, person, or place in analytic or any literary work. Are, we have different types of allusion. We have belief allusion. We have classical allusion. As some other historical allusion, we have them. Uh, we have uh, those uh, uh, examples. All these are explained in one of my e-books. That is background knowledge for literature. If you need it, you can send through the message box that I will send you the link how you can get it. It's an ebook. So that is because of speech for you. Now, if you are new on this channel, please I want you to subscribe to the channel because this channel is very unique and dedicated to literature in English. The source problem on literature in English. So if you have any question, just send it through the message box. Maybe about the topic we have just discussed, near any clarity any clarification on this, just send it to the message box that uh, so maybe uh, for the explanation on what uh, on any of the on any of the figures please have discussed or any question. You can also invite your friends to join us on this channel. You're also free to share my video on any social media platform, maybe Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, or any other group that you might belong to. So that is that. Uh, I'm happy that uh, you are part of this and uh, God will bless you as you are following this channel.